Yo, what's up everybody? My name is Tech. Welcome back to another video. Today, I'm going to teach you two different ways with two different rigs to make Valorant thumbnails. So let's hop right into it. So yeah, these thumbnails are super sick by, uh, by Wings here. Super good composition, really nice lighting and glow and uh, a lot of really good compositing here as well. Also, you know, all fully custom face poses. These are not simple to do by any means. So these all look great. Um, there's another one, Blizzy. This one's sick for phase. These are all super cool thumbnails. I assume they might add text later or uh, I mean, these are just like art pieces. It's really awesome. Uh, so shout out Blizzy. Go appreciate that on Behance. And uh, finally, we got Dreiss here. Dreiss is actually in the Valorant 3D Discord server. Uh, so don't ever steal thumbnails from people. Never. Uh, only take inspiration from them. Uh, and also commission them for the sake. I really like, you know, like this is a fully custom pose, like him holding the stinger here. Uh, we're probably gonna make something similar to this, uh, just with a character holding a weapon, not anything like this composition. But uh, yeah, this looks super clean, so let's hop right into it. So one thing that's super sick is uh, Zane actually has made these Valorant advanced rigs. So I'll go ahead and select right here. It has all of the agents. Uh, and you can just go ahead and import these. There's different things you can do. I like to uh, just do like the 001 for these. Um, so I don't have all the extra stuff in my scene. But just like that, you can see it's a lot easier to look at the bones than the original one, which uh, I'm not sure if I can actually show it here. Probably not with this, but there's like a billion bones coming out of the default face model that are really annoying to work with. Uh, so if you're trying to add like expressions to your character. Like if you want to make her smile, uh, you just go ahead and click control tab, go into pose mode here. What I like to do is just select the lip corners, go ahead and pull it up. Now we can get a nice like little smile here. Maybe even make like the eyes uh, kind of squint a little bit, you know, like when people smile, their eyes tend to close a little bit. There's a lot of reference you can look at to make your poses a lot better. So make sure you utilize that because posing and images and reference images are super important in modeling. So, you know, we can have a little smile here, bring these like up more. Uh, is there one back here? There is. Pull these down a little bit. Bring these up. But yeah, all sorts of ways to pose also inverse kinematics are actually in this so all you have to do is select the foot and like move it up and forward and it will move the whole leg with it which is super sick and there's also this like foot roll control back here that make her like on point or not uh there's also you know you can just click around and read what all of these are up in the top so you know moving this around can have her kind of like lean out this is her like global controller if you want to move the whole thing. Um, I believe you can also import Mixamo animations using this. Maybe if you use some retargeting, um, all, all sorts of stuff you can do here. Uh, and you know, just move around the arms. So if you want to do a custom pose, this is probably the easiest way to go. Um, but next I'm going to show you how to import in game animations, which is also a much quicker way of doing it. Um, but you know, if you're you only have so many animations of that and there's only so many things you can do. So I highly recommend you guys make custom ones because it'll set you apart from other people and you know, no one will make the exact same thumbnail as you do. So let's, let's switch over to that right now. All right, so now that we're in Blender, I'm gonna go ahead and append Jet from the Kakusa pack. Uh, and I'm actually gonna do her third, uh, not her third person, but her character select model because I wanna be able to change the bones in her face. So let's go ahead and select our Jet here. You can see there's a ton of different bones in the face here uh, and it's pretty pretty intimidating honestly when you first look at it so what we're going to do is we're going to select her uh, we're going to press n on our keyboard to open up this little side menu here uh, and you can either use the psk psa import tool from the github or valo anim i'll put a link for a description or i'll put a link in the description for this so some animations actually have two different parts the upper body and the lower body so i'm just going to show you how to combine those real quick um, other ones you'll just be able to import and with your Valo Anim or Piana uh, and animation tools you can just click uh, face fix or twist fix and it will usually like fix all your problems but just showing you quickly how you combine the two um, 
right here for the upper body. I have that selected. Uh, you just import the thing and duplicate the whole collection. Uh, so let's go ahead and import our Valorant animation. Let's go standard, guns, third person, vandal. And here's the reload. We're going to import the upper body. Uh, and here we are going to import the lower body for the reload. Now there's these little buttons here. Uh, if we click on this rig, we can do the upper body setup since we're on UV uh, and the lower body LB. And this just deletes all the keyframes above. So when you're copying them over, it's like way easier uh, and they don't override each other. So we're just gonna click on this rig and do control tab or just go up here and click pose mode. We're gonna select a bone, do control A. Let's go ahead and copy it here. Uh, now we can go to this rig, select a bone or A, and then just paste it. And you'll see just like that, that now it'll do the whole animation. Uh, we can just delete the hierarchy on the second one. And just like that, we have our jet reloading. Now you wanna find a frame where she's just holding the gun with her finger around the trigger. Cause if you start off like in the beginning, it's gonna be annoying to try to align the gun. So what we do is we just find a frame where she's not really doing anything here. We select the rig for our weapon that we imported. Uh, I'll put a link to this one in the description uh, to Beluga's Behance, who he's done a ton of models, uh, but also you can just find them in random places online. So since we have the main rig selected, we're just gonna go to our object constraint and click on child of. You're gonna select jet here, this upper body. Uh, and for the bone, since her right hand is the one holding the trigger, which is usually how you uh, align it, we're going to type R underscore weapon, and we're going to do weapon point. And this will kind of snap it to where it is, assuming your weapon is at like zero, zero. Uh, and now with this selected, we can go ahead and just rotate everything. So I'm going to do local controls because uh, that makes it easier for the gun. And we're just going to spin this around until it is in her hand uh, and normally the agents grip the magazine here so we're just going to twist this around here uh, and that looks pretty good you can make more like minuscule adjustments by holding shift uh, so that's always a good one too if you want to make very minor ones so that her stuff isn't clipping inside of it. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Also, you'll notice her shoulder blade is kind of clipping inside itself, so you can just select her, go to pose mode, uh, and find her shoulder pad. I think it's right here. Uh, you know, and just rotate that up, turn it around, whatever. It just makes it just not clipping in her shoulder. And that looks pretty good. Also, now is your opportunity to edit the face. Uh, you can select her like lip corners and pull them up. Excuse me. You can see how hard it is to do on this model versus Zane's, which is why I recommend you try that out. But you know, you can give her like a little smile. Uh, the face is a huge part of the render, so actually take the time here to go and do that. Uh, in the next clip, I didn't do that, uh, but yeah good make sure you do that because the face is a huge part of the render here it's like that's pretty good you could probably take a picture here so just with our camera control alt zero or i'll make a new camera actually because that one's custom add a camera control alt zero uh and we can start to move this camera around actually so let's try to get something like this Turn this off so it's easier. Perfect. Now we can get out of pose mode. Turn this off. It's looking much better. Uh, on to lighting. So for this, I like to use cycles, but you can also use EV. Um, you can get great results with anything, honestly. For me, I just like to use cycles. I like to do 128 samples. For my graphics card. If you have a slower one, you can do less and just rely on denoising. I'm just gonna use some area lights and rotate them around the Y axis.
like to do a little three point setup. Have one behind her and hop back into our camera view and check out how the lighting looks. I want to make this first one a little bit brighter. brighter to maybe give it like a hint of blue give the first one a hint of blue make it a little bit cooler light maybe the back one we have it be a little warmer make it brighter so we have that cool backlit effect uh, and that's looking pretty good for me right now so now in your uh, render settings here you go down to the film tab and you click transparent and it will make the background transparent. Uh, for me, I also want to add some depth of fields. That's actually in the camera. You can change, you can add depth of field and change the distance. This one will probably be pretty close. You can also show the focus plane, which is cool. So when you're adjusting the distance, you can show what you want to be focused on. Uh, and that helps with stuff like this. Then if you want to make it more, you just turn the, uh, the f-stop down. It makes the foreground blurrier. I'll keep it at like 1.4. I think that looks good. So I'm just going to go ahead and render this out here. All right, perfect. I like how this looks, so let's go ahead and save it. And now it is Photoshop time. So now that we have Photoshop open, there's a lot of different things we can do. I just took this screenshot from Rockland Screenshot Pack. So you can either go in game and take a custom screenshot, which is probably the best thing to do, or just find one in like a pack online. And uh, we can go to our exports now, go ahead and put in this jet we made. And for me, I think this background is like a little too close to the ground. So I want to just scale this up, make it a bit bigger. Uh, and put the ground like much lower so it doesn't feel like jet is just like on the floor here uh and since you know there's a lot of blur we can also go into our blur gallery and add like some gaussian blur popular a lot of people do uh, motion blur which is a cool one too uh you can set like different angles for it the distance stuff like that Maybe some motion blur and some Gaussian blur uh, might work well together. So there we go. That looks cool. Uh, and then also uh, you can add like a light hit, which is really cool. So you can just get a soft brush, make it huge, uh, pick a color. I think we can do like a, a yellow for this and just, you know, as soon as you click, you can kind of see it adding sorts of things. So let's have one behind that's like screen or linear dodge add uh, and then let's actually make one on top too so like that I uh, maybe just cut it back a little bit now we have this cool kind of like yellow bright yellow aesthetic to our piece here uh, we can also make this one screen if we want it to be less uh, intense or linear dodge add we'll go with screen in this case uh, and our jet now is looking a little bit bland. So a lot of people use camera raw filter. I recommend doing this on like almost all of your images inside of Photoshop. Um, so kind of rule of thumb, if it makes your piece look better, then keep it. If it doesn't, uh, just reset that. So like exposure, we can up our exposure a little bit. I think that looks good. Contrast, maybe a little bit more. Highlights can be brighter. Shadows can be a little bit darker. Um, that looks good for the white. I don't really want to mess with the black. In this case, maybe I'll bring it down a little bit. Texture. We add a little bit of texture and kind of see what that does. Kind of brings out some of the occlusion here. So I'll leave that a little bit. Uh, clarity. Let's bring that up a little bit more. Now, be careful with like maxing this out. 
because it'll just add like so much unless that's the aesthetic you're going for but we'll just do it a little bit the haze also makes your image a lot darker uh in this case I'll do that and then up the vibrance and saturation and just with those like few settings change you can already see how different the image looks like between the two like the one on the right is way more vibrant and like in my opinion appealing this left one is like very like filmic raw just not changed uh, you can also go into detail add some sharpening a lot of people do like noise reduction and they just like blow it out which i think can look good if you're going for like that kind of softer like aesthetic but in this case since i use blur i don't really like what like the noise reduction does to it uh, but i'll just do them like a little bit also add grain if you're doing graphic design putting in and stuff that always helps to make make it look better but i'm not gonna do that for a thumbnail because it's already so compressed anyway i uh, look okay and just like that that's so much better than before you can see with and without it I have this radiant picture on my computer, so I'm just going to go ahead and throw that on there uh, because I know everyone wants to be radiant, I guess. I don't know why. It's kind of cringe. We can just like add one, tilt it, uh, take this, our move tool and just duplicate it and add another one. Uh, since this is a transparent image, we can actually just probably take our lasso tool here just fill in this background with black let's make it pop more so let's just make another layer make this black fill it put it underneath there we go so that's like a lot more contrast so we can just go ahead and duplicate this here and rotate it so it matches I like that's pretty close so I'm cool with that. We just wanted to group these. Maybe even take uh, these, put them next to each other. Group each of these and then duplicate the groups. Let's make one more like in front of everything. But maybe behind her gun still. It's like down here. Maybe bring the opacity down. I think that's kind of cool. Maybe we add like a hue saturation over it and make it brighter, more saturated. Maybe we bring that opacity back up. I don't like the composition of this one. I'm try moving that like over here. I don't like that one. I do, but not right there. Let's try moving this over a little bit. And there we go. I think that looks pretty sick. Uh, you can also find packs online that have different like glows. So this one's cool uh, right here because it adds particles into it. So we could like flip this horizontally here, maybe even change out that one for it. Get some cool particles in the background. Sign here, or even just leave it in the foreground. I think that looks pretty sick too. Uh, also feel free to add some like lens flares. There's plenty of packs online you can do. Uh, this one's cool, this Action VFX Lens Dirt. Super cool pack, it's free. Just throw it on, make it a little bit bigger and change the mode to like screen or linear dodge add. Adds for some really nice like little bokeh effects there. And even put it behind the jet. I think that looks super cool. Maybe even flip it horizontally so it's more towards like Right, you're supposed to left, maybe make it bigger. And now we just have that little extra detail in. So like, I think that looks sick. And if you really want, you can go in at the end and press Control Alt Shift E, and it will merge everything into like a picture. And you can convert that to smart object and just hit it with another camera raw. 
So, you know, here we can kind of adjust the contrast. We bring out the highlights, make the shadows darker, uh, add some more texture and clarity, dehaze it a little bit. More vibrance, maybe less saturation, a little bit less vibrance. Uh, you can add grain if you want. Once again, doesn't show up amazing. Shows up good in this little preview here. Maybe not so much on the final piece. And yeah, I mean, I think that looks pretty good. A little bit of sharpening, noise reduction to get rid of some of the jagged edges on here. And color noise reduction. And yeah, there we go. That's our render. So, you know, you can feel free to apply this sort of technique to literally anything you want. There's also a billion different types of Valorant renders. It's not only with agents, it can be just with weapons. You can add in props, all sorts of things. But this is just kind of a quick way to uh, to do this stuff. There's also text that you can do. Uh, look up just regular thumbnail text tutorials, all sorts of ways. But hopefully uh, this helped you guys. And thanks for watching. Peace.